Paige and today's video is going to be part two to my Tati Beauty Blendiful review. I filmed, edited, and uploaded my initial first impressions review yesterday so I will link that down below for you guys to check out. I do have a giveaway in that video. I'm giving away a Tati Beauty Blendiful. I highly recommend watching that video before you watch this one just so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about in today's video because yesterday was a lot. Um, I had a lot to say and I also have a lot to say today. I'm gonna try some different things out today and this is sort of like an update slash round two for the Tati Beauty Blendiful. So I do want to mention that it is currently 4.05 p.m. on January 14th, Tuesday, January 14th, and I washed my Tati Beauty Blendifuls at 9 a.m. this morning, and they're, I would say, about like 90% dry, 85, 90% dry, but they're not 100% dry, so I am going to take my blow dryer on a low setting to finish drying these off before I use them. Tati mentioned that that's something that she does, so that's what I'm gonna do today. I don't have a Dyson, but I do have this really sparkly dry bar blow dryer that I am obsessed with. So we're gonna go on a low setting and then like a cool heat. A cool heat, what am I saying? A cool temperature. Okay guys, so I really wish that I didn't have to bring this up because this literally seems like I made it up and I promise you, I am not making this up. I promise, like I don't even know what else to say because I know this sounds like I'm making this up, but I'm blow drying my Blendiful with my blow dryer, which Tati said she does, um, on the lowest like heat setting, like this has different heat settings here, on the lowest heat setting, on the lowest like power. Supposedly you can machine wash and dry this, but I'm sitting here like this, blow drying it, and then I look down, and there's literally a tear in the side of it. Like, the seam is coming undone. And, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Um, so I did hand wash this with a, like lukewarm water, like not cold, not warm water, and I did use a little bit of the uh, beauty blender cleanser, like some of this on, on here, and I just like kind of cleaned it as if I would my sponge, you know, like I got it going, like getting the product loose on my hand like so, and then like squeezing it out like this. This is something that you're supposed to be able to bend and fold in any direction, but it obviously didn't <laughs> withhold that. I've only used this once and I washed it once, so, um, I mean, I'm still, you know, <laughs> I don't know maybe I got a defective sponge because I feel like nobody else is having issues except for me and I I don't I don't know um so anyway um this is almost completely dry I'm just gonna finish drying this off and then we're gonna get into the application today I am going to be comparing one side of my face using the blendiful and then one side of my face using my sponge just so I can get like a good comparison of what I do every single day versus what this does for me and then hopefully I will have some visual results to share with you as well I wanted to quickly mention before we get into the makeup application that yesterday's video had no malicious intent behind it I did have a very mixed review I had some negative things to say about it I also had some positive things to say about it and I was in no way trying to be mean or rude towards Tati or Tati Beauty or anybody for that matter I was just giving my honest first impression review I mentioned in that video that I am NOT a makeup artist I do make up on YouTube for my job but I am not a professional I would say I'm the average consumers and this part product is marketed to the average consumer so I don't know I just figured based on my first impression that it would be a little bit easier to work with but Tati said that there is a learning curve to this product so that's what I'm doing today I'm trying some different things out and try to learn how to make this work for me um, and for you guys as well. I don't think that Tati expects everyone to give a completely positive review just because it's her products and her brand. She's a very honest person and I do look up to her as a person, as a makeup artist, as a beauty YouTuber, as a business owner. I think she's an incredible person. I just had some critiques about the product and the way that I use them and I truly think that she would respect that. After reading the comments on yesterday's video, um, a lot of them were nice and positive but some of them were getting a little harsh and I just 
want to say that I don't want to spread negativity in an unnecessary ugly way. I did watch Tachi's reveal video twice before filming my video yesterday. I hadn't seen any other reviews yet though. Since filming that video I've watched Manny MUA's review and then Kelly Strack's review. I will link their reviews down below if you guys want to go check their videos out. Their makeup looked beautiful when they were applying it so I'm not sure why I had so many issues but we're gonna try some different techniques today and I'm really I'm really hopeful. <laughs> I really do want this product to work for me because it's such a cool idea and like I said I love Tati. I will always support Tati. She's she's amazing. She's Tati. So anyway we're gonna get into some primers. So I'm just gonna use my Moonshine Miracle Cream from Juno & Co and I'm just gonna apply this with my hand since this is a moisturizing primer and that is what Tati recommends. So I'm using that on the like perimeter of my face. I also decided that I'm going to be using mostly the same products that I used in yesterday's video just so that we don't have too many confounding variables like maybe those products that I used yesterday just weren't the perfect match for the blendable and if that's the case we'll find out today um but I just don't want to like switch up all the products that I use and the makeup technique you know what I'm saying next we're gonna go in with a pore filling primer this is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer Tati loves this primer I really enjoy this primer. I purchased it because of Tati's rave reviews. So we're just gonna go in with a little bit of this primer and I am gonna go in with the Blendiful and really, oh, I have like an eyelash. I'm gonna really press this product into the skin because I have since learned that Tati has step-by-step -step instructions on her website as far as each product goes that this is meant for. So for primer, it says, banish the appearance of pores and fine lines by using a pressing motion with a blurring primer. So I'm gonna take the pointy Part of this product and I'm just going to press this into the skin right in my t-zone area which is where I experience the most texture I will say that the blendable feels just as soft as it did right now after washing as it did right when I took it out of the packaging which I'm very happy to see there's nothing worse than getting like a really soft fuzzy blanket and then washing it and then it's like not even comfortable anymore so I'm really happy to see that the texture of this product hasn't changed at least not after one wash. So now we're gonna get into some foundation. On this side of my face, I'm gonna be using my Miracle Complexion Sponge from Real Techniques. And on this side of my face, I'm gonna be using the Blendiful. I will be using the Belief Beauty Foundation that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna do like two pumps, two piles of two pumps that we can like pick up from. All right, so going in with my Miracle Complexion Sponge on this side. As you guys can see, is really covering up all of that hyperpigmentation, like, just like that. I love this foundation because it's not cakey. It does have a natural finish. I have more oily skin, um, but I do like to use this actually with uh, moisturizing primers because I feel like it gives a really nice finish to the skin. I just set my face with a crap ton of powder as well. <laughs> Here's what the Believe Beauty Foundation looks like on my skin applied with the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Now we're gonna get into the Blendiful. So the first complaint slash issue that arose with this product for me was the shedding. If you saw yesterday's video, you saw all of these gray fibers like shedding off into my foundation onto my skin and it was really annoying and I it just kept happening throughout the entire makeup application process. I did say in that video that it could be because I didn't wash it prior to using, which I mean it's it is a general thing I think of like towels like the first time you wash and dry them the lint trap is full of the excess lint and then the more times you wash it the less lint is in the lint trap so I'm thinking maybe it's the same thing with this situation so we'll see if that works I will be updating you guys I had so many of you all commenting asking me to update you after I washed it so here is your update so now I'm going into the foundation from here and we're gonna try a swiping motion this time. So here we go. This still feels so strange. I was watching Kelly Strack's review and she mentioned that it feels like a stuffed animal and I will say that it definitely feels like I'm rubbing a stuffed animal on my face. The specific instructions for the foundation say easily glide on foundation with a sweeping or buffing motion to achieve a flawless and airbrushed look. So that's what we're doing right now. In both of the reviews that I watched, I saw that they kind of used a combination of both sweeping and patting motions. I was using more of a patting motion yesterday because 
as I'm trying this out for the first time, I noticed that's how I was getting the most coverage. But um, a lot of you guys stated, like the instructions say, to use a sweeping or buffing motion. So that's what we're trying today. So as I'm looking at my skin, um, I've used about the same amount of product on both sides. Um, they definitely look different. Um, I'm not sure how well you can really tell, but you saw I put two pumps of foundation in each spot. The bottom spot is where my Real Technique sponge was, and the top one is where the Blendiful was. But here is a side-by-side -side comparison. This is the Tossy Beauty Blendiful, and this is the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Immediately, I can tell you that the sponge gave me so much more coverage. And I actually have some little, like lines on my skin which i mentioned in yesterday's video um i can very obviously see like the swipe mark so i'm gonna zoom you in a little bit to try to let you guys see what i'm talking about all right so i turned the brightness down i'm really not sure if you guys are going to be able to tell but this is me looking straight on this is the real technique side this is the blendiful side you can see that this side has so much less redness it's obviously more full coverage um but i do have like little streaks across my skin right here i notice it the most and then also like coming down right here um, I feel like this might be kind of hard to see on camera, but I'm doing my best to show you guys So I feel like you kind of do have to go in with like a little bit of a Stipple motion after to kind of give it more of like a skin like texture Which I think maybe if you swipe it first and then you like pat on top It would give your skin more of a skin like finish and not like a streaky like you took a brush and rubbed it all over your face. It definitely doesn't look bad. I don't see any shedding, which is a good sign, but <laughs> if you look at the side of my nose, like this side versus this side, there's like a direct line. So um, we're gonna continue on to concealer now. For concealer, I'm using the Boing Cakeless Concealer from Benefit. The directions for the concealer say, use the pointed tip to easily lay down a smooth and even amount of concealer where precision is needed. So I'm going to apply the same amount of product that I normally would on this side for my sponge um, and then just like down the middle of my face. Um, but for this side of my face, I'm going to use a little bit less product just to see. The Blendiful supposedly doesn't soak up as much product as a sponge does and a little bit of product is supposed to go a long way which kind of seems like the opposite to me because I got so much less coverage from the same amount of product on the Blendiful side versus the sponge side. So um, we're just going to go in. Um, I feel like for this I kind of have to like dab. What did the directions say again? So for the concealer, it doesn't say if you should necessarily use a sweeping or a dabbing motion. So I'm just gonna go in with a dabbing motion because I feel like this is working out well for me. <laughs> All right, so this is what the concealer looks like. Blend it out with the Blendiful. I think it looks beautiful. Like this looks really nice. I did get some really good full coverage from that and it looks very nice, very, very nice. So now we're gonna go in with the Miracle Complexion Sponge, and we'll compare the two sides. All right, so as I'm looking at the under eye area, I feel like they both look really nice. I definitely have more coverage on this side, but I did use more product on this side, so that could be why, but neither of them look bad. They actually both look really good. I feel like this side looks less cakey even, the Blendiful side, but like I said, I did use a little bit less product. But the coverage is pretty close. I actually am going to go in with a little bit more concealer on the Blendiful side just because I feel like I could use it. So now when I'm looking at my under eye area, they both have about the same amount of product on. They both look really nice. I honestly probably couldn't tell a difference. Um, they both look incredible. I really like this for applying under eye concealer actually when it's not shedding all over my skin. So, so far I think foundation if you have like really nice skin and you don't need full coverage, I think this would be great. But if you are more of a full coverage kind of person, I feel like this sponge is a better option for foundation. Concealer, I think they both work beautifully. They're stunning. For powder, um, I am going to go in with the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Magic Powder in the shade Beige. This is the powder that I used yesterday as well. I also use my sponge to set my under eye area and bake with powder.
boom now we're gonna go in with the blendable and do that same exact thing All right, so here is what the two sides look like. This side looks a lot like neater, um, but that doesn't really mean anything. So now I'm just gonna go in and set the rest of my face. I do usually use my sponge to set a majority of my face and then I go in with a brush just to dust over the rest of it. Just because like I said a million times, I have very oily skin, so. I use a lot of powder. All right, so here's what the skin is looking like so far. This is the Blendiful side, and this is the Real Technique side. Obviously, this side still looks better in my opinion because it's more full coverage. You can still see a lot of this hyperpigmentation over here, but other than the foundation, I feel like the Blendiful is working equally as well as my Miracle Complexion sponge. And once again, still no shedding, so Either go right ahead and wash your Blendiful immediately, or if you start to experience shedding, wash it and then try it again. This definitely has made a huge difference. For bronzer, blush, and highlight, I'm just going to go ahead and use my Benefit Cheek Leader palette. I was going to go in with a cream contour, but typically I don't use a cream contour, and yesterday was such a tragic <laughs> disaster that... I don't know if I'm ready to try this out again. I think I might need to try this out a few times on my own time before I come on here and like make a fool out of myself again. So <laughs> we're just going to use the Benefit Cheek Leader palette. I'm going to go in with Benefit Hula, a mixture of Coralista and Gold Rush as blush, and then Cookie as a highlight. Once again, using my bling brushes, you can use code PAGE for 10% off. I'm also going to go ahead and do my brows really quick. I'm not going to be doing any eyeshadow today, but in yesterday's video, I did a look with the uh, Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette, and it came out so freaking pretty. I was obsessed, and when I was applying my eyeshadow yesterday, I actually used the Mini Blendiful to apply my eyeshadow primer, which is the MAC Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. I just dipped right into the product with one of the like fuller sides of the heart. I just kind of like bent it like this, dipped right in, and then boom beautiful favorite favorite method of applying this product i like it better than a brush i like it better than using my finger this is this is this is the combo right here so um i think this is great for that also this is supposed to be good for like blotting excess oil when you're like out and about and you know you don't have time to like powder up your face so i think this would be really nice it's small and like you know, can fit in your purse real easily. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what we've got going on here. When I look in the mirror up close, I can definitely tell a difference between the two sides only because of the foundation, because this side is so much more full coverage than this side. I would say this is more of like a medium coverage foundation with the Tati Beauty Blendiful, and then this is more of a full coverage foundation with the Real Techniques sponge. Both sides look good. Neither of them look bad. I think that they both look amazing. I could definitely go out in public right now and nobody would notice a thing, honestly. Like, nobody would know. Um, I will say that I feel like I'm going to definitely stick to the sponge as far as foundation application goes. I think this is quicker, easier, and I get more full coverage. Um, I think this takes me just a little bit more time to, like, really blend out the product um, and like buff it in and make sure there's no little streaks or anything like that. As far as concealer goes, honestly, it's hard to see a difference, but I, I feel like if I were to do my makeup again right now, I would probably still stick to this, but I wouldn't be opposed to, you know, playing around with this some more. For under eye setting powder, like baking, I prefer this. I do prefer this over the sponge. I feel like it really helps like lay down the powder very softly and helps get into all those little crevices so that my concealer doesn't look all creasy. And then like I said, the concealer um, with the mini, not the concealer, the eyeshadow primer with the mini is amazing i love it so much so here we are once again with a little bit of a mixed review i feel like taking into consideration yesterday's video we completely solved the issue of the shedding the, the shedding was a non-issue today just wash your blendiful before you use it if you're worried about it shedding no shedding whatsoever you guys saw um so that's really good however we have a new issue which is the 
a hole in the side of the blend of full which after one use and one wash this should not be happening this is supposed to be something that you can reuse over and over and over again you can wash it it's supposed to be eco-friendly you know cost effective this is $18 for the set of the two of them um, right here $18 and my miracle complexion sponges I get at TJ Maxx four for $12.99 so that's like what $4.25 a piece for this so the price difference is pretty drastic. I can get four of these for less than the price of one set of these and it already has a hole in it. <laughs> I could have gotten a defective one. I could have gotten a funky one, but I don't know. I don't know what that says about the product, um, but I'm going to have to see what I can do about that. I definitely want to continue to use the Blendiful, play around with it in even different ways, um, but I feel like today came out a lot better than it did yesterday. As far as applying the foundation, swiping motions is the way to go i would say but i would go in and dab afterwards if you have any streaks because i definitely had some but just lightly dabbing over my skin got rid of them immediately and it just gave me a nice smooth finish however i still didn't get nearly as much coverage using this as i did the sponge. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. I hope that you all know that I did not intend to be mean, rude, malicious, ugly, hateful, hurtful, or anything like that in my previous video or this video. I just want to give you guys my honest opinion and even though it wasn't a completely positive opinion, I feel like I took what I learned from the first impression and applied it to my second attempt and I feel like things got a lot better so I hope you guys learn along with me I only want to give helpful reviews for you guys so you can decide whether or not you want to purchase products or you know if you are struggling using your product maybe watching my video could help you try something different that worked for me so anyway <laughs> I love you guys so much I will have the blendiful link down below as well as Tati's textured neutrals volume 1 palette they both are in stock I believe still they were yesterday let me go ahead and check right now <laughs> So the Blendiful is still in stock as of the time I'm filming this, and so is the Textured Neutrals Volume 1. I love the Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette, you guys. It's so beautiful. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> I love this. I've raved about this on my channel. I did a whole review. Love it, love it, love it. The Blendiful, I'm still working my thoughts out on it but um I definitely feel a lot better about this product than I did yesterday uh so anyway I love you guys so so much I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one bye